Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to a new season of The Awardist, where we are chatting with the actors, creators, and more who are contenders this year, and breaking down the state of the 2024 Emmys race. I'm Entertainment Weekly Executive Editor Jared Hoff. We're gonna be featuring some folks who, um, of course, you might expect to be part of the race, but also some contenders who didn't get to do many, if any, interviews uh, for their projects because of last year's double Hollywood strikes. Um, oh, yes, there were all these things that came out during that, uh, what, like four or five month period. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say that is certainly the case for the hit, huge Enormous Amazon Prime video movie, Red, White, and Royal Blue. That one debuted in the midst of those strikes. And today, our special guests are the stars of that movie, Nicholas Galatzine and Taylor Zakar Perez. Aww. Two of the, I mean, those guys are like, they're so huge on social media. They have such great fan bases and they have um, such, a, Kristen, a really hilarious, funny rapport with each other. I mean, as soon as we got on virtually to record that interview, they were like razzing each other. <laughs> it was like a, it was like a roast, um, at the beginning <laughs> of that interview. Um, so they were a lot of fun and they had a lot of great things to say. Joining me now are the two stars of one of last year's most talked about movies, Red, White, and Royal Blue, Nicholas Galatzine and Taylor Zakar Perez. By the way, um, also a bit of a mouthful, those names, you guys, uh, but welcome to the podcast. How are you? <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah, Jerry. yeah. Well, yeah, that was not so. It was low hanging fruit. Was <laughs> I wasn't trying to be, so I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to make sure all the fans picked up, you know, we might have some full puns going on in this entire um, interview. So so we'll see how that uh, works out. But <laughs> thanks so much for joining me. How are you guys? I'm great. That's the, I'm fantastic. Happy to be here. Happy to see both your faces. <laughs> I am not happy to see Taylor's face, but I am oh, happy to be oh here. Oh boy! Well, well, maybe we'll we'll just we put up a I don't know something a piece of paper. I know. On that I was screen. trying to we'll, see we'll, if we'll, I can like <laughs> take him off, like hide like, him, yeah, hide yeah, participants. Yeah, but, yeah, there you go. Yeah, one of those yeah, kinds of things. <laughs> I have a post it. I'll put over your face, Nick. Easy enough. See. We're making this all work out just fine. Um, I, I got to say, though, this really like it feels like such a, a, a great uh, insight window into into the relationship that you guys developed over the course of this film, which I, I feel like I completely understand why. I um, mean, we'll get into some of those specifics a bit later. But I, I want to start here because, you know, the, the film debuted on August 11th. At that point, we were about a month into the actor strike. And I know you guys were able to do a few interviews prior to that starting. But you didn't really get to do like the full promotional tour like we usually see for a film, much less get to like publicly celebrate its success and interact with fans who are, I mean, really going crazy for it on, uh, you know, Instagram and TikTok. Um, but but I have to assume, obviously, you guys were seeing a lot of that. You were, were you talking and, you know, sharing all of that yeah, with we, each other? We were, we, I mean, uh, I, I generally speaking, try and uh, being online like scares me quite a lot. But we, so we would kind of, I feel like, I, I remember us like kind of dipping into it and then being like, oh, it's it's good. It's good. And then like, I kind of like going, going away. But um, I mean, you know, just to this day, it's pretty am amazing to, to see the resonance it's, it's been able to have. Yeah, it was a little scary because you're like, if a tree falls in the woods, doesn't make a sound. And that's kind of what it felt <laughs> like when the movie came out because we're like, okay, it's out, but we can't do much about it. And so we just kind of had to wait, like Nick was saying. And so the amount of text message links I got about, you know, reviews or interviews or just fan responses were nonstop. And so I kind of, as Nick was saying, left it to my nearest and dearest to kind of inform me <laughs> on the film's success. Yeah. Let, let others be kind of a filter for you. That's that's. That's fair. I, I appreciate that and respect that. Is is it fair to say this is one of those like phenomenons that did you see your social media followings grow in the process? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nodding heads. Yeah, yeah. It happened. Yeah, we did. I think we were texting each other like, mate, 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 mate. <laughs> mate, mate, mate. <laughs> yeah. Like what is going on? Yeah. yeah I feel like we had a, a nice base from both of the films that we did before. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then you just saw this uptick in following and you're like, oh, wow, this movie really struck a chord. And and um, that was a great barometer to see how well it was doing, I guess. The, the thing I think is so cool, special, however you two want to categorize it, is that you know, all these months later, fans are, uh, they're catching up with each of you outside of events to um, autograph books or, or photos. And there's this whole thing going on right now on social media where we see like yeah. you two are signing over each other's faces or drawing okay. little mustaches. <laughs> okay. I want to step in here. I want to okay. step in here because 
I did not know that this was happening until, ah. until I saw this in person and someone told me they were doing it. Uh, this little fucker over here, he's, <laughs> he's disrespecting my body of work. He's disrespecting <laughs> me as a human being. Um, and so I, I retaliated. So I just want to make that very clear. I mean, someone someone has to strike first, right? And then it's just a response. Taylor, what, I pos- the what possessed you? What what have you got <laughs> against me? I <laughs> honestly have nothing against you. The I think the fans just are always excited when you know a new piece of magazine or some new photograph yeah. comes out. And I don't know, I think I feel like it's indicative of kind of who we are as people, but who we are as characters in the project that we do just kind of mess with each other and one up each other. And so when I saw our face in the GQ, I probably signed a hundred of them. And so by like the hundred and first, I was like, you know what? This could be really fun. (laughs) (laughs) And now, and now it feels rude to like not sign on each other's faces. You know, it's like, I feel like that's what people want when they, uh, when they show up with, with books and stuff now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Well, but but also I think that it's it kind of speaks to a bit. I mean, you know, what 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 does it mean to you guys that fans have supported and loved the two of you in the way um they they have as, you know, their their Prince Henry and and first son Alex. Take it, Nick. <laughs> okay. Um I I mean, it, it's very overwhelming. I I mean, I feel very uh humbled by it and um I just there are so many wonderfully talented people in this industry and there's so many wonderfully talented people who'd love to do the job that we do. And, and, you know, when you make something that, that has this sort of, uh, seismic, uh, shift in, in your career, I just think, uh, you know, I don't want to speak for Taylor here, but I just think we feel very, very, uh, humbled by it. Um, and, and to be honest, just be more than the, the, the signings or the photos or anything. I just really love, you know, chatting to people on the street about, about this movie and, and, um, you know, oftentimes how positively it's affected their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I will second that because the amount of folks that come up to me and tell me, Oh, when I read the book, I was this close to taking my own life. Or when I saw your film, Mm. it made me not want to kill myself anymore. And those are the moments that are really, um, important to me because I do. And my friends will tell you, my family, like I'll stop on the street with somebody and chat with them for five to 10 minutes. And like, we're, we're completely in route to somewhere and have to be somewhere. But when somebody stops me, I'm like, this movie means so much to people and to me and to like everybody who made it hopefully, but that I like, do want to lend an ear and hear their story because, you know, at the end of the day, it is a love story. And I think that's why they're falling in love with it. You know, I think it's also a testament to Casey's brilliance as a writer. And then they mm-hmm. gave us the book and there was such a huge ground swell of support for it. And so, you know, Nick and I knew yeah. going into it that we had um, some tough shoes to fill. <laughs> hmm. But I think people think you did it quite well. I, as you said, you know, it's it's a love story. Um, there's, uh, you know, romantic comedy elements even here. Like there are some very funny scenes, but perhaps a little cheese, but like the right amount of cheese, a really good cheese, you know. Um, but like you're saying, it, it does deal with some very real things as it relates to um, like the, the impact of coming out and labels and perceptions. Um, what were the conversations like behind the scenes about how you guys could bring a new point of view and something unique to the table because there there are a lot of movies that are coming out stories but this one it it felt different yeah we had tons of conversations surrounding this and and i feel like with queer cinema in itself uh it's like some of the major themes are you know personal identity and exploration uh empathy and understanding and definitely challenging stereotypes and going into this film we were really all in this major agreement. And I, I, obviously the book also speaks for itself, but um, you know, the book is celebrated for its positive and nuanced representation of, you know, the queer community and characters and relationships. And so we just knew that going into this, we're like, this is going to be contributing to um, its popularity and impact is that positive representation. So we just kind of, it was kind of nonstop 
nonstop conversations and discussions mm. about this, right, Nick? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I think we just wanted to create something that felt um, just very new and fresh and um, and wholesome funny and 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 that had a heart to it and i think you know uh, it was just every, everyone just felt very very aligned i think in um in in terms of the creative top to bottom you know whether it be taylor and i or, or, or matthew and casey and and the amazing producers the 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 music on on, on the the film i mean it felt there, there was just a, a really great sense of community i think established on on this job which was um totally. yeah very fulfilling yeah. Um, was your, I, I mentioned earlier, we'd have lots of puns here. Was that mm. when you said top to bottom, was that one? I'm kidding. I'm, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> kidding. I didn't mean to make light. It was a very serious answer there. Um, but, um, yeah. So in the midst of, of all of that, that we're, we're talking about, um, there is of course intimacy because it's a love story. We gotta, we gotta have that. Um, trust, of course, is vital between co-stars, but I'd imagine a bit more when that kind of stuff is involved. So did you guys make a point of, of hanging out, having dinner, whatever that might mean to develop and build that between you? Or did it, was, was it just kind of inherently there already? I mean, I think it was, uh, Taylor and I have talked about this a lot, but like, you know, I remember the, the first few minutes of rehearsal, I was like, oh, this guy's my friend. Like, this guy is going to mm. be a buddy. Like, we... <laughs> we just have we have the same sense of humor it's very yes and um we just we just really really got on and and i think that just this like inherent sense of trust came with that and and you know and, and a sense of responsibility of, of wanting to to make something great but um you know that that's not to say we didn't have great people like robbie taylor hunt who was um our mm. intimacy coordinator yeah. who funny enough i've worked with twice now and um, oh, wow. and he's yeah he's like my guy now <laughs> seeing as that's basically my thing is, is just doing intimate work on camera but um no <laughs> but uh but but he's he he i think very much helped give us the um it helped us refine the sort of the choreography of all the intimacy in a way, mm. but, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I mean, you, you, why don't you speak to this Taylor? I just, I just feel like mm. we, we really just had a care for each other and, and a trust with each other. And, and, um, you know, we've just, it's so fun now seeing my mate at all these awards and stuff. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's, it, it's a closeness in, in a project like this, I think is required. Yeah. Mm. I, I think someone asked me on, I was at the Vanity Fair party. They're like, who's a better kisser, Joey or Nick? And, <laughs> and it took me by surprise because legitimately it is, it, it's such work, you know, that yeah. it, it doesn't even go into that territory for us yeah. that you're like, oh, um, yeah, I guess uh, uh, I don't know how to answer that question, you know, because like the, the actual romance there is not there. It's like, it's all, you know, as if. And so when they actually ask you the real life um, questions, I always like choke up. I'm like, I have, I have no idea. You know, it just was like a dance that we choreographed for two weeks. Yeah. Um, but, and what Nick was saying, like when we first, cause what we had a, our chem read first, and then we met like a week later. And I think we were really lucky that, you know, Matthew comes from the theater. So we had yeah. a solid week of rehearsals together going over scene by scene with the different characters. And usually on set, you'll get one or two days to maybe just read through it with the director and, with us, Amazon really allowed Matthew to have time with us. And because of the subject matter and because how important this book is and how beloved it is, I know that, you know, he wanted to get it right. And mm -hmm. Nick and I knew that going into it. We're like, okay, buddy, buddy, like we're in this, <laughs> no, no messing around. Uh, we're like having fun, of course, because like the best part of acting is like, is the fun and yeah. the work. But we just, we just knew that we were representing something way bigger than ourselves. Yeah. Were there any moments that were perhaps then improvised between the two of you because of that connection and bond that you, uh, that you formed? God, well, I mean, I, I feel like it, in all the sort of the scenes that have bounce, you know, there's just like a, mm. a, um, there's just like a, a, a oh, I, I was, I think this, the, the storage closet, there was a lot of like funny <laughs> physicality in that. And, um, and also trying to make the space, seem smaller <laughs> than it actually was because we actually had a lot of room to be honest and we had to kind of mm. make it seem even more and more cramped but um 
<laughs> I don't know, Tay. Would you, what would you what would you say, mate? I feel like we. I think, as you said in an interview we did together, like script is Bible, right? Even yeah. though it yeah. was adapted to a screenplay from a book. And so we really, and also Matthew being a playwright, he was very honest about the lines and being word perfect. And so I feel, and also Nick and I couldn't be any different than our characters. I think like, Mm. I think Alex is just, he's like a cannonball when he comes into a room and, and Nick's character is a bit more reserved and, and, so we really had to click into that. And I think I was able to be more goofy on set before setups. And sometimes Nick would have to be a bit more, you know, <laughs> ready for the scene and in like a more serious manner. And so I feel like we got our kicks in like the hair and makeup trailer, like mm. joking with each other and like, uh, and, and holding. But like when we were on set, it really felt like, not that there was no room to improvise. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Nick. It's just, it just felt like there was such weight and depth to the lines already that we were like, okay, if you say it in a different way, it might mean something else to the audience. And it's so important to get this message across. Or this is the meaning yeah. of the scene. And this is how it, it, the, the characters and, and the, the story Look, arcs. And, 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 you know, I, I don't think it's, um, uh, it, it's it's not a negative thing to say that you know you you have different directors and and different director yeah. writers and and like like Taylor was saying before M- Matthew coming from screen uh, from from playwriting I mean words are his sort of almost principal concern in the sense and so he wrote the script very very specifically um, and, and so you know you want to pay you want to give justice to that I think you want to um, credence to that so yeah yeah that's a great way to put yeah. it. Sarah Shahi, I gotta say, she she gets she gets a bit of a of an eyeful at once. I mean, I guess audiences do too. Um, but anyone who watched M- Minx, well, yeah. Um, but but yeah, my question here: what was the, the 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 scene when she walks in on you guys? I mean, Nicholas, you're like you know tucked away in a in a closet or whatever. Uh, Taylor, you run out into the room. Um, was was that all planned out? Is there a conversation on the day about like what <laughs> state of undress she finds you oh guys in? How's that work? I will take this one. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sarah. Sarah is a whirlwind when she comes into the room, and she's so she, funny too. She's hysterical, and I love working with her. We both loved working with her, and she comes in with this plan. She's like, "All right," she's like, "I'm going to walk in, and I'm going to see him there, and I'm going to walk here, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to spin, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that." <laughs> and you know, Nick and I had just run our, you know, the, the kind of the beginning or end of a, a scene that we shot in there, and then. Sarah comes in and we just kind of see her do her thing. And we laugh because we're like, there's not that much room in here. Like, you're not doing any of that. But we all kind of make eye contact and she does it. We do a run through and she goes, huh, well, that's not going to work, is it? And, and so we, everything kind of, because we shot in, you know, hotel rooms and apartments and you're in confined spaces and different camera setups. I think that was a, that was a, that was a steady cam. I think the entire time because the space was so small mm. and so moving was very difficult and so when it comes to the states of undress that was the day that i think matthew said in an interview that i had questions about my butt and i did because i'm like this is the day this is the big day um i have questions what's it going to look like and you know like on other projects i've done they've always like you know they've like digitally removed certain things and i'm like okay and oh. so then you become a little self-conscious you're like oh. is this not look good what's wrong with this you know right. and, and so yes those conversations are had uh, i would say like the day day before and like mm-hmm. with like hair and makeup with with the director with the producers like who's feeling comfortable who's not i mean i think nick what you had um what in bottoms you had a a, a jo- just you just came out in a, a jock strap yeah, and yeah, and, and I won't even go into uh, Mary George because that's his own uh, yeah. special. <laughs> yeah, uh, indeed. Um, I got to tell you guys, one of the things I love about the movie so much is the um, how the text exchanges play out in bed versus like seeing phone screens all the time. Was there anything uh, tricky? I guess is the word I'll use about like making that work. Um. I mean, in what sense? Just from a sort of a performance standpoint? Uh, per- performance, but just um, in terms of, you know, taking what, you know, everyone knows to be text messages, but turning it into more like a, you know, 
person to person, face to face conversation. I feel like that was a Matthew thing because yeah, it yeah. was yeah. quite a conversation. I remember hearing they're like, we don't want it to be the typical, you know, zoom in on the phone. We want it to be right. a bit more interactive and fun and and um, and I, I just I do know like for camera setups, you'd be like, hey. We need to have you all the way to the left because the text is going to appear on the right. Um, mm. So that I do know that that was some technical conversations that were had. Yeah, that makes sense. Got to be on the correct side of the 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 movie screen because of the TV or because of the phone screen. Totally makes sense. Um, filming in London's uh, Victoria and Albert Museum. I mean, I, I can't imagine how incredible that was. But I know something that fans were so excited about too was because uh, that you both say in person versus an email when you say history, huh? Um, like little things like that, all these little touches, uh, I mean, did you, at what point did you discover that those were things like what the things were that fans were most excited to see play out in the film? Well, I mean, the cake was like, you know, I think, I think that was the big one, right? Like Mm -hmm. that's such a, that's just such a visceral scene and, and, you know, Matthew coming from his theater background, obviously wanted it sort of completely, um, planned like a, um, you know, uh, like a, Abbott and like Costello. A yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Nah. Um, and, and so, so there a lot of kind of choreography and timing and everything went into that. And, and obviously a lot of it that relies on camera movement and, um, and everything. So, and that, that was pretty early on in the filming process as well. Um, mm. so I, I'd say that was, that's the one that jumps to mind for me. I don't know about you, Taylor. Oh, the, yeah. The the cake is, I think, what the cover of the book, and that was a particularly tough one for me because, <laughs> well, well, just I mean, the comedy and stuff was so much fun that we rehearsed that. But my dog passed away the night of the first day of filming, and then we had the second day of filming that scene. And so I come back, I find out my dog passes away, and then I text. I think I text Matthew and Nick. I'm like. Hey guys, I'm going to be strictly professional tomorrow. I'm going to be fine, but like, I'm just going to probably be a little different because I'm, you know, a 10 hour flight from the dog that's passed away. And, um, and, and then I get there, everybody's looking at me with these sad eyes. I'm like, fuck, what's wrong? And then they're like, we're so sorry. We're so sorry. I'm like, did you guys send a company wide email? Like telling everybody (laughs) about this? Like everyone's like, would you like some tea? Do you need some tea, Taylor? (laughs) I'm like, I'm okay. Thank you. And I was like, well, now I have to be good. I now have to be okay. Um, But the the cake scene was major. It was just so much fun. I mean, we rehearsed with, what what do you rehearse with? Um, Icing at the, I don't even know which rehearsal. The the glass and and everything. But for for you, it was more for you as well, because so much of the technicality relied on your getting the icing, getting mm. putting it on the shoulder at the right time, sure. the cup. Like it was so, yeah. it was so like not natural in a lot of ways. So yes. I, I mean, given, you know, the fucking shit show that you had to, the emotional shit show that you kind of had to go through. I mean, it was so impressive how, um, <laughs> how well you handled all that. Thanks. I do know that, you know, there'll be stills of the country house or something or there'll be like the victorian albert museum and you know as an american you know i grew up in chicago we have the field museum museum of science Mm -hmm. industry planetarium like those are so america to me or you know the planetarium here in griffith park and so i kind of take them for granted where i don't know nick did you i mean you probably grew up going to the vna museum and you're like oh yeah i've never been here after dark this is cool but (laughs) this is another day in london for me yeah, I mean, it, it was, um, but I mean, but, but very, very cool. I mean, very impactful and, and, um, and special to be able to, um, to do that. To access. I figure, yeah, I, I'm trying to remember if we shot sort of anywhere else. That, I mean, we shot in some amazing locations, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but running, running through the museum, because, you know, it's like you're <laughs> a giant library, right? And so yeah. when they're like, hey, sun's coming up, they're like run across these uh, just ancient marble statues. And you're like, Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and it's almost like you're ready to get caught doing something wrong. And, yeah. and so just kind of, we were able to take some liberties at places that, you know, the, the everyday person passing by or, right. or going to it, it just, it didn't happen for them. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, sure. I'm definitely grateful for that. And the manners we got to go to the, 
Um, we went to where, 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 where we were. Kensington Palace was supposed to. Yeah, be, yeah. That was a remember that was the week after I got COVID as well. So like it was yes. my this week where we had like the 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 emotional scene in Kensington Palace. We had Red Room. We had like all of this stuff. What, where was that again? Though I, I always forget. Bo- Bournemouth. Bournemouth. Was oh it wasn't yes it wasn't Bournemouth because we were all staying in the that um yeah that hotel together. Wow yeah that was a tough week. Yeah. Well, so you were in Ken in Kensington Palace filming. No, 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 no. We were. Oh, oh. but no, what was we, making? We 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 were in. Place yeah, we were in some stately home in in Bournemouth down, down near the coast. Yeah. yeah. In this beautiful got it, got it. rundown manor mm-hmm. next to a witchcraft shop, and oh. you know it's it's so interesting because you know as as Americans we look at like when when our architecture began versus mm-hmm. when the United Kingdom's architecture began. Yeah. And you're just such a huge difference. You're like, wow, <laughs> we, we're really stunted on history over here uh-huh. when, you, when you compare it to our friends across the pond. Yeah, indeed. Um, well, guys, I, I, I know a lot of people are asking you about the potential for a sequel. Of course, there's got to be a story. But do you even know, is anyone thinking about or working on a potential story? Go on, Taylor. <laughs> Go on, go on. I've, I'm over here like glazed over because this is the question I get <laughs> I know. every day of my life. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. That's but why I was you, trying, to, uh, trying to offer it up to you in a different way. But, no, yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, because <laughs> I met Jared, uh, Nick, I met Jared at, the, at SCAD at on SCAD, a panel. Yeah. And he asked me then, and I was like, I have no idea. And then <laughs> asked me again at the SAG Awards. And I, I don't get annoyed with that. I'm totally messing with you. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, well, right. I am not sure yet. You know, I think on previous projects that I did when there was, you know, already a film in the can and then they, you hear about the announcement of a sequel or something, mm-hmm. um, that's when you know, we become privy to it. But personally, no, uh, I'm, I'm waiting for Casey to announce the second book. You uh, know, like I'm, I'm assuming that that's what the film would be based yeah. off of kind of like a Francis Ford Coppola and um, um, no, Mario, Mario Puzo. Puzo. Yep. Yeah, so I feel like that would be the, I mean, that would be the way that I would love it for it to happen. Yeah. Right, because Casey's the one who's built yeah. up this world, so it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I would love for kinda... the first material to be there. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because Matthew got the opportunity to to adapt it, and but Casey is the the brain behind yep. this world and these characters, and and you would want Casey's touch in there mm-hmm. because they're so smart and kind, and just sees you know this world is such a a, a what if world, and. Mm to have another one of those films like this that had such a great response and in countries where it's quite literally illegal to be queer sure. in these countries, yeah. it was number one on Amazon. So you know that throughout the world, what there's 8 billion people, there's 8% yeah. of them identify as LGBTQIA plus you're like, that's 640 million people that, are watching this hopefully right you know like at, mm. you would love to affect that many people and then the community around them i think yeah. it's just as important for those a part of the community and those that are not part of the community to watch this project and just learn something enjoy it laugh and that's yeah yeah i mean it's it's what you guys said you know it's it's, it's had a big impact you've uh Fortune, been fortunate enough to to read some of that and and see um you know some of the have conversations with people about that so um so congratulations on that and and truly appreciate both of your guys time congratulations on this thank you so thanks much. Jared. appreciate yeah, it well those guys I, Taylor I got to say I had been seeing Taylor all through award season um so he and I kept like catching up with each other I felt like every week we were we were becoming like weekly like oh you're following me again <laughs> um, that kind of thing the fans have really it's I love seeing something like this where fans uh, have made something so much bigger than it. it's yeah. it's not just about these two guys it's about the story and how much they love it and and are getting from it the fans are kind of um, defining the legacy, this project. And that, that to me is really cool. I mean, of course it's a great story. And like you said, we need more of it, but, um, yeah, it's, it's become something really big, a a pop culture phenomenon for sure. The movie, it, it did get a PGA nomination, it's producers. So it is, it is certainly in the mix. Um, and there, there are always fewer TV movies than limited series, uh, but they still get their own category. So, um, it's definitely worth checking out on Amazon prime video. Thanks for listening. 